Hey everybody, welcome back. We finally have the benchmarking video where we quantify the results of the 5800X3D versus the 7800X3 in both Windows and in Linux and at 1080p and 1440p. So let's get right to it. Uh, for this benchmark on the previous video where we did the first look at the performance of these two side by side, uh, with the 5800X3D having the 6900XT and the 7800XT um, using the 3080Ti. Uh, I set it up that way because I thought that the 3080Ti was going to be much faster than the 6900XT. Uh, as we found out in that video though, the, the 6900XT was demolishing the 3080Ti uh, in that scenario. So for this benchmarking uh, objective measurement of frames per second, I went ahead and uh, used the 6900 XT in both the uh, systems here um, to even it out and make sure that it was as apples to apples as uh, possible. So uh, for the test systems, We've got the, like I said, the 6900 XT at 293 watts uh, maxed out. Uh, that's the max for the reference 6900 XT, and that's going to be used in both systems. For the 5800 X3D, we have the uh, Asus Crosshair uh, Wi-Fi X570 with four sticks of eight gigabytes, totaling 32 gigabytes, at 3600 uh, megatransfers per second, CL16, highly tuned, and... Um, both systems using one terabyte NVMEs and uh, Windows 10 with the latest drivers and Ubuntu 22.04 with kernel 5.19. For the 7800X3D, uh, we've got the uh, MSI B650 Mag Tomahawk Wi-Fi with uh, two sticks of uh, 32 gigabytes for 64 total at um, 6,000 megatransfers per second with CL30 and highly tuned using uh, Buildzoid's uh, DDR5 uh, stable uh, high performance timings. Uh, and again, uh, for the 7800X3D, if you saw the last video that I made, there was a problem with kernel 5.19 overheating uh, one of the components. It could have been a VRM, uh, could have been uh, the chipset. Uh, I wasn't quite sure, couldn't pinpoint exactly where that uh, super hot uh, and electrical component smell was coming from. Uh, but updating to kernel uh, 6.2 fixed that uh, without any problems whatsoever. And then for Windows, uh, to track the FPS, uh, we used MSI Afterburner and for Linux, uh, Mango HUD. And both were set to 500 milliseconds uh, for the recording of the um, uh, metrics. For the benchmark, since Star Citizen is so difficult to benchmark and there is no included benchmark there, uh, what I've done is I wanted a representative uh, scenario of typical gameplay. So uh, we start out in floor five of the Habs there at uh, Ambitious Dream, which is Crew L1, uh, the Lagrange uh, refinery point there at Crew L1. And um, the ship is already called into the hangar, so we don't have to worry about uh, maybe lagging ASOP terminals or anything like that. Jump into the ship, fly to Daymar, uh, to the Shubin mining facility there on Daymar, park in front of the blue building, enter the blue building, and look at the ASOP ground terminal there for just one second, and then exit and get back into the ship. Fly back to Crew 01, land, refuel, restock, repair if necessary, uh, shut down the ship, and then run back to the starting point, and then end the benchmark there. Uh, the consistency was very um, uh, even and consistent. The uh, If one benchmark was 127.8 on one run, uh, it would be maybe 127.2 on the next run. So five runs each for each um, resolution, for each CPU, and for each OS. And so quite a bit of runs and averaged all out. And so let's get right into it here. For 1080p, here you can see the 7800X3D gets uh, 179 FPS average versus the 5800X3D at 145. And then for Windows 10, uh, 7800X3D gets 152.3 versus the 5800X3D uh, getting 124.5. Uh, the 1% lows are much better on Linux than they are on Windows. And even though that is on paper here, that it is um, kind of almost equal for the 7800X3D. Uh, it's it's not the the smoothness 
on the 7800X3D is subjectively much, much better than the 5800X3D in all scenarios. Uh, and what I, by, I mean, what I mean by that is the frame time pacing consistency is just much better on the 7800X3D and it just gives a much more immersive and pleasurable experience um, flying around and um, just doing your normal day-to-day -day stuff there in Star Citizen on 7800X3D. Much, much better. So, um, But what's interesting though is that the 5800X3D in Linux almost comes close to tying uh, the 7800X3D in Windows 10. Even though that is the case, uh, again, subjectively, the 7800X3D is much, much smoother uh, and a smoother frame time pacing consistency than the 5800X3D, even in Windows 10 being candy kept there. Uh, for 1440p, the results get a little bit more truncated because we're becoming a little bit more GPU bound in some scenarios. So in Linux, uh, the 7800X3D is 148 for the average, 48.4 for the 1% lows, and 16.6 um, .6 there for the 0.1% lows. And that handily beats the 5800X3D. Um, and again, the 7800X3D frame time pacing, much, much better than the 5800X3D. And uh, for Windows 10 and 1440p, again, uh, it's not so being so much CPU bound as we're starting to run into more GPU bound, which is, again, why they're looking a little bit more uh, consistent than from the 1080p there. So um, there you guys have it. I uh, hope you get something to take away from this. And again, what's not on the paper here is just how much smoother that 7800X3D is uh, in just flying around and general gameplay, uh, which definitely makes it... Um, worth it in my opinion if you can swing it uh but not only that um you know the am5 platform hopefully is going to have three generations of uh, cpus as well which uh would really make it a much more cost effective uh, system than anything on the linux uh, on the uh, intel side so that'll take care of it for today hope you guys enjoyed this and uh when the 7950 xtx which is rumored to come out, if it does come out. I'll be getting that, and then I'll be putting that up against the 6900 XT. So uh, stay tuned for that, and we'll see you out in the verse, and uh, have yourselves a great time.